One of the questions that I get asked all the time is, can non-residents open up a bank account in Panama? And the answer is yes, it absolutely can be done. And not only is it one of the first steps that you need to take if you plan on getting your residency in Panama, but opening up that offshore bank account is really one of the first steps that anyone should take in creating their plan B and starting to diversify internationally, even if they don't want that residency down the line. And Panama accounts make a great first offshore banking option. So if you're interested in how and why to open up a bank account in Panama, even if you aren't a resident of Panama, then stick around. It's the Unconventional Entrepreneur Show. Welcome back to the Unconventional Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, Glenn Kowalski. Every week on this channel, you'll find new videos to help liberty-minded entrepreneurs and investors like you find more personal, financial, and location independence. So go ahead and hit that subscribe and that notification button now so you never miss your chance to find more freedom in this unfree world. Before we get into the how of a bank account, why would you want to open up an offshore bank account in Panama? Well, first of all, it's for plain old diversification and insurance. You should never keep all of your eggs in one basket, and that includes your bank accounts and keeping those in just one country. Think of this as insurance for your cash. You're getting it out and diversified in case something catastrophic ever happens to the U.S. banking system, or more importantly, in your own personal situation. For example, it's an easy way to protect your funds from things like lawsuits and confiscation. Putting your cash into a Panama bank account makes it virtually impossible for creditors, uh, vindictive ex-customers, employees, or spouses, or really anyone else to touch. And as far as diversification option goes, Panama has a great stable banking system, it's strongly regulated, and unlike U.S. banks, it's very conservative in their investing. You don't see Panama banks making these risky investments like subprime mortgages and all those other things that you're seeing happen in the U.S. So this means that even during bad economic times, the banks aren't super over leveraged to death. They're in a great position to survive short-term economic downturns. They're also using U.S. currency. And while you know that I'm not a big believer in the long-term potential of any fiat currencies, the U.S. dollar is still the strongest of what I think is a bad system. One of the most common reasons that I hear about people asking about opening up an offshore bank account in Panama while they're still not a residency is they eventually want that second residency here. And opening that bank account while you're not a resident is your first step. Because if you want that residency with the Friendly Nations visa, you need to prove that you have a mid to high four-figure bank balance. And that preferably happens in a Panama bank. So how do you actually go about getting that bank account? The process is really simpler than you might think, but it can be a real pain if you don't have all of your ducks in a row. So first of all, you'll need to get two reference letters. And at least one of those reference letters needs to be from a bank in your home country saying that you've been banking with them for at least two years. They usually don't need any more information than that, but over the last couple of years, they've been adding that you have a, for example, a high five-figure balance or whatever your balance happens to be. And it seems to be getting a lot more common and more important now. And that's especially important if you have a decent back, bank balance back home because it's gonna make things a lot easier when you go to open up the bank. Now, while having two bank references is even better, you can also get that second letter from a friend or an acquaintance here in Panama. This should be somebody who's in a good standing in Panama and is preferably a well-known business owner or a lawyer. So generally speaking, your lawyer probably makes the most sense for most people. Ideally, whoever this person is has known you for a couple years, but in the case of a lawyer, that length of time isn't near as important. Next, you're going to want to have two forms of picture ID. One of those has to be or should be your passport. The other um, could be a national ID, a driver's license, or military ID. You'll also want your address and your proof of residency. If you aren't a Panama resident yet, this would be your address back home. Things like utility bills, tax return documents, and other official documentation with your address can be used as that proof. And finally, you're also going to need the address and the phone number of wherever you're staying in Panama. With all of these documents in hand, it's time for you to hit the pavement and choose the bank that you want to apply to. One thing I should mention here is you will have to visit Panama in person at least once to get that bank account opened. This isn't something that you can normally do remotely. And remember, that the large national banks like Banco Nacional and Banco General, they're usually a lot more difficult, if not impossible, for non-residents. But large chains like Benismo, Benesco, and Multibank, they'll all open up accounts for foreigners. And so will Scotiabank, Global, and many of the smaller banks that are around. 
Also, since thanks to FACA, it's getting more and more difficult all the time for U.S. citizens to open accounts abroad. There are a couple of chains in the city that specialize in foreign accounts that might make things a little bit easier if you're not having any luck at any of the others. Which takes me to a warning that you really should be prepared for this to take a while. The due diligence in getting an account open in Panama is likely much higher than what you're used to. And FATCA from the U.S. has made it a million times harder for U.S. citizens and residents to open accounts. Plus, you're not necessarily going to find a bank manager who speaks English. So if you don't speak Spanish, you might find life a lot easier if you bring a translator with you. That translator can be your lawyer, and in theory, that should help. But in practice, I know that I got turned down for an account when I went with my lawyer. But the very next day, at a different branch of the exact same bank, I had an open in about an hour doing it myself with really, really bad Spanish. But either way, be prepared. It could take you an hour or it could take you several days. One day you may be refused and then the next day you'll have no problems at the same bank but at a different branch. Also, practice your signature before you go and make sure that it matches your passport. I have helped people open accounts where we were at the bank for several hours trying to make their signature on the account documentation match the signature on their passport. So keep all of your patience in check. It's not going to help if you're rude or impatient. And you do have to realize that things aren't like what you're used to back home. Opening up your first offshore bank account in Panama isn't necessarily easy, but it is quite simple. And it's something that most people can do with just a little bit of patience. And once you do, you'll be more diversified in a stable banking system. And you'll have taken the first step to legal residency if that's something that you want now or in the future. To learn more about residency and citizenship and more in Panama, check out the videos that you see on your screen right now. This is Glenn from the Unconventional Entrepreneur Show, and I'll see you over there.